Good evening, Bahamas, on the broadcast tonight. The Parliamentary Commissioner dismisses naysayers as his office ramps up election preparations. The FNM Chairman slams the Prime Minister's crime comments. And the Culture Minister addresses reports of a carnival clash. Welcome to our news, the weekend edition, and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Nold. With more than 111,000 Bahamians currently registered to vote in the next general election, the Parliamentary Registration Department is ramping up its activities in preparation for Decision 2017. Our Christina McNeil sat down with the Parliamentary Commissioner, who gave some insight on preparations so far. The Boundaries Report has been approved by Parliament and the lines have been drawn for the new constituency maps. See Providence. That's a general overall index of the Providence. And being in Grand Sound. Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall has his work cut out for him as he heads into his first general election in the post of Parliamentary Commissioner. But Hall is confident his team will be ready. We are doing multi tasked functions. We are preparing for that as we speak in addition to voter registration. My colleague, Mr. Thompson, he has been sent to me to assist in that uh, capacity to help us get ready for the election. So um, we will be ready. He was referring to the aging Parliamentary Registration Department headquarters on Farrington Road. The building has seen its fair share of wear and tear, including severe roof damage sustained during a storm some time ago. This as the department has also struggled in the face of voter apathy, which many believe caused low voter registration numbers just months before the next general election. But Hall says he believes that will soon change. We anticipate there might be an influx now that they know we've issued cards. So we anticipate an influx, but um, we, we will be accommodating the best we can. All of them are doing, progressing quite well. I don't have no particular stats, but all of them are doing quite well. From the Inagua in the south straight to Abaco, so they're improving day by day. The department began distributing new voter cards on Friday. Hall says there are still many opportunities to register to vote. We have the, the schools open as well, um, 10 to 4, as well as the post offices and the malls. Um, we cannot stay at the malls no later than 8 o'clock. That's their normal closing hour, so um, we are doing it at their, their grace, you see. But we are, we are available encourage people to come out. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina McNeil. In other news, police are searching for the driver who left a motorcyclist for dead after crashing into his bike last night. According to police reports, the victim was riding his motorcycle on Hibiscus Road off Farrington Road around 7 p.m. when he was hit by a blue Honda. The driver of that car then left the scene. The motorcyclist was rushed to hospital where he died early this morning. Meanwhile, two women and a teen girl were among six people arrested in connection with the shooting of a woman on Paloma Street last night. Police say the woman had just left a party around 10 p.m. when the occupants of a dark colored Honda shot her before speeding off. The woman was transported to a hospital where she is listed in stable condition. Police are now questioning three men, two women and a girl. That's just one of two shooting incidents reported last night. Around 7 p.m., a gunman was shot a gunman shot a man as he was walking along 2nd Street, the Grove, before fleeing on foot. That victim is also listed in stable condition. Well, Free National Movement Chairman Sidney Colley blasted Prime Minister Perry Christie for his recent comments on crime. Colley says while it's clear the Bahamas is facing a crime crisis, it is nothing like the Wild Wild West. Jasmine Brown reports. Of course we are not the Wild West. Uh, do we have serious problems, uh, which is really a breakdown in uh, family structure and social mores? We do have that. On Monday, Christie said the recent spate of murders in New Providence was reminiscent of the Wild West. He told reporters that the situation must solicit a major and continuous effort by his administration to flood the streets with officers in an effort to do all that is necessary to bring this madness to a halt. 
The FNM chairman blasted the nation's leader, saying he appeared to be desperate and out of touch with reality. By that statement, I see the Prime Minister throwing up his arms, his hands in the air, and giving up. That's what I read in the statement. The Prime Minister is not the only government official to comment on crime in recent days. In the House of Assembly on Wednesday, National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage broke his silence on the recent rise in violent crime. Nottage announced more than a dozen crime-fighting initiatives that included increasing foot patrols and stationing mobile patrol units in inner cities, community lockdowns, expanding urban renewal and CCTV, as well as establishing a gang unit within the Royal Bahamas Police Force. But Colley called the initiatives a regurgitation of failed policies. As far as I'm concerned, it's just another paper response to a very serious crime problem. Uh, I've heard it before. Every year, for the last four and a half years, the PLP have been shelling out crime-fighting initiative and seeking to convince the population that those initiatives were going to make a difference. Frankly, they have not. Holly added, Nottage's pronouncement did nothing to restore hope to Bahamians who are living in fear. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. We're shifting gears now amid reports of major trouble surrounding the planning of this year's Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival. Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Dr. Jenny Johnson is speaking out. He admitted to our news that there have been a few challenges and some changes, but says the festival is in good hands and will run as planned. We get that story tonight from Kyle Joaquin. Trouble has followed Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival since its inception in 2015. Chairman of the National Festival Commission, Paul Major, has reportedly threatened to resign, and Unique Bahamas Limited, the exclusive producer of the festival, is considering taking legal action against the commission. This after the commission sought to terminate its pricey contract with the company. Additionally, very little has been said about the annual festival due to kick off this year's events in April. Youth Sports and Culture Minister Dr. Danny Johnson says yes, there are a few issues, but the government is doing what it must for the festival. Everyone all around the world knows what Carnival is. They know that name. They don't know Junkanoo. So we have paired them together for a reason. And what Junkanoo Carnival is now, economic stimulus, job, entrepreneurship. We're pushing all that business into the hands of the bands and the people that will own it and grow it, continue to grow it. There's no conflict in what we're doing. She was a minister, Obi Wolchcombe has already stated that the government is taking a more hands-off approach and allowing the festival commission to take charge. But marketing and advertising for this year's festival is far behind. Here is Johnson's explanation. It's we stimulated it, it's well on its way, and when you see the week of FIFA being in the Bahamas, and they get to see a little bit of Junkanoo Carnival in the Bahamas, then people can say, God digging it. Now I see what he meant. That FIFA event takes place in late April and runs into the Junkanoo Carnival weekend. But just how much does this year's event benefit from exposure during the FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup? Over the span of two years, government has invested over $20 million in Junkanoo Carnival. The partnerships that we're, we're creating and the, the idea of the partnership is the government is a stimulus in the process. We're stimulating economic activity in the creative arts and culture zone. So Junkanoo Festival is just one of them that we're doing. There are many more to come. And so the same model that we've created, we got to keep going. This year's Junkanoo Carnival takes place May 4th through the 6th. Reporting for our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Still to come on our news, another opposition MP calls for an independent boundaries commission. And a little later, a look at the quote of the week. <laughs> 